We're in the heat of Texas summer, but as we know, talking about the Dallas Cowboys never really cools off here at the Star. There's always something to talk about. So, Mike Fisher, you've been around the Star. You've seen all of the off-season workouts. Is there a player that might have more of a contribution this year that you think could surprise some people? Uh, it's worth noting, by the way, Texas is one of the hottest places on the planet. And we can feel it. Uh, and, and back in the olden days at St. Edwards University in Austin, we ran a deal, Richie Witt and myself, with all the media people. Complain about the heat, put a dollar in the bucket. Yeah, interesting. And so, because it really is, I mean, you know, yeah. it's part of it's in your head. Right. Uh, uh, hydrate and get in the shade. Yep. Um, but we will get to Oxnard, both Thank of us. Thank goodness. And we, It'll be way better. We won't have that problem. <laughs> we're still going to wear sunscreen. Yeah. And we're still going to drink water. We might also drink some beer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and one of the guys that I think we're going to see jump out at us yeah. is the cornerback, Gilmore. Ooh, we, love that pick. We get so caught up in Trayvon Diggs and the interceptions, and why not? Yeah. Um, Cowboy fans, because they're, again, so so hyper-focused on the Cowboys, are probably only a little bit aware that Gilmore with the Colts last year was really good, and Gilmore during his time with the Patriots mm -hmm. was the best in the business. Not to mention he came into Dallas very in shape, yeah. ready to rock, knowing all of their plays, and yep. he's already a leader on the defense. Uh, a leadership guy yeah. by nature. Um, we can't be the first person to have thought of this, but of course, if your last name is Gilmore, your nickname is probably Gilly. And if you play cornerback, remember Rebus Island? Uh -huh. Gilly's Island. Gilly's Island. Do you get it, or is that before your time? Gilmore Island? Or... You never, have you ever heard of Gilligan's Island? Yeah, Gilligan's Island, that's so, what it is. Gilly's Island. Gilly's get Island. Get it? Uh, I like that. We probably need to uh, trademark that. I was just going to say, bit. another t-shirt. Copyright, yeah, that's just awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but I, that's the guy to me, that this, he's not obscure, yeah. but we're so focused over there on that cornerback, yeah. I think we're gonna have some fun watching that one too. Yeah, I can't imagine how many takeaways the Dallas Cowboys are gonna have this season between Stephon Gilmore, Trayvon Diggs, Micah Parsons. Well, it's gonna be wild. Yeah, regarding Cowboy takeaways, and of course, uh, they have been the league leader mm -hmm. two straight years under the coordinator, Dan Quinn, something that hasn't happened in the NFL since the 70s Steelers. Wow. Um, that's a million years ago for yeah. you young kids. <laughs> uh, can they do that again with the numbers? Well, it'll it'll help that they have Micah Parsons mm -hmm. available. He's talking about, I'm gonna play eight different positions. <laughs> One position that I guarantee he's gonna play is an edge rusher. Yes. And uh, he's also, and I think this is some wisdom that comes to him at age, what, 24? Mm -hmm. he's, he's starting to realize it doesn't matter whether you get 13 sacks or 15 sacks, or 11 or 19. Mm -hmm. What matters is, are you impactful? Yeah. Uh, and he's learned that by kind of observing the career of Aaron Donald, the great mm -hmm. Los Angeles Rams, maybe one of the greatest defensive players ever. I think he's right. in that conversation, who's been a defensive player of the year. He's had 20 sacks. But there's other years where Aaron Donald doesn't get that many sacks, mm -hmm. but the team's successful. Uh, and Aaron Donald does more than just get sacks for Los Angeles when they're right. Yeah. And maybe, just maybe, he'll be one of the reasons they're right again. Yeah. So I think that's really smart of Micah Parsons to look around and say, I, I can go, I could go put up numbers yeah. if that's what I wanted. If I went to Dan Quinn and said, listen, Dan, I really, really want to get 20 sacks. It's the most important thing in the world to me. Yeah. Then I guess they could have a conversation about it. Bree, you know what it reminds me of? It's the modern defensive version of Troy Aikman uh -huh. as a quarterback of the Cowboys. Again, the kids don't get this because they look at Aikman's numbers and go, that doesn't look that good to me. <laughs> kids, you should have seen him. <laughs> he, when the heat was on, he was better. Yeah. When the playoffs started, he was more accurate. Mm -hmm. uh, That's what you need. He was not risk free. Mm -hmm. uh, he was just mistake free mm -hmm. and had Aikman in that era played for, say, the Dolphins and used the Dan Marino offense, he would have been Dan Marino only with a running ability. And if Aikman played today, yeah. oh, <laughs> and wanted to be, a, and, and again, the offense, hey, we're supposed to throw the ball. Yeah. We're gonna break passing records. Troy Aikman would own every passing record in the business. Um, but that wasn't what Aikman cared about, and it's kind of cool now that Micah Parsons, adding a little weight, mm -hmm. adding a little bulk, not so much that he loses any speed or quickness, yep. that he's coming to realize 20 sacks sounds really cool, yeah. but winning playoff games sounds cooler. And of course, Parsons is the favorite to win NFL Defensive Player of the Year, so we'll have to see how that all pans out. Let's talk about another Dallas Cowboys star who's coming off a solid year, wide receiver CeeDee Lamb. 
do you consider him to be in the top 10 receivers in the whole league? I like what Des Bryant, uh, who's uh, an officer in the 88 club, yeah. or as we want to call it, because it sounds more nightclub-y, Club 88. Club 88. Isn't that better than the 88 club? I don't know. I like them both. All right. The 88 Club sounds like a name of a bunch of players. Club 88 sounds like some place where there's a velvet rope. You really want to go. Yeah. Uh, Dez's response to this question is, and he ought to know, as biased as he is as a cowboy booster. Yeah. He goes, is that really a question, Bree? <laughs> Easy. Yeah. Is that really quite? In fact, he thinks he's top five. Jefferson in Minnesota is, I think, the guy that everybody is going to lean to. Mm -hmm. But CeeDee Lamb is doing those kind of things. Yeah. So, Tyreek Hill. Uh, yeah, so I think top 10's easy, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I do, I think top 10's easy. And I remember what Dak told us a year ago when he said, and again, he's a little biased. Yeah. He said, CeeDee Lamb is gonna lead the NFL in targets. Yeah. Well, he was right up there, <laughs> and it'll help now. Now, yeah. does it, it, it might, it could take away from targets now that Brandon Cooks is here. Yeah, or it might help. And it'll definitely help catches, yeah. uh, uh, because he'll be more open. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I think C.D. Lamb, and I'm not much of a list guy. This is just kind of the way we uh, twiddle our thumbs over the course of the offseason. Yeah. But he's a top something. Yeah. Whether it's top <laughs> eight, top five, or top two, this season will prove out. Yep, I like that. Head coach Mike McCarthy is getting ready for training camp in Oxnard, and as are me and Mike. But as he enters into the season, what constitutes a successful season for head coach Mike McCarthy, who's taken over play calling. Yeah, unfortunately on Big Mike, we're doing revisionist history on what he's already accomplished. We're seeing people, I think CBS Sports did a thing, they ranked him as the number 19 coach in the NFL. And they put him behind guys. Yeah, 19 seems low. Who'd never done anything. Yeah. Now you don't have to, you you know, it's a, it's a horse race. That's what makes horse racing. You don't like Mike McCarthy, you like that, that's fine. But they've got him ranked below mm -hmm. um, the Cleveland coach, who hasn't done anything, mm -hmm. the Minnesota coach, who has never won a playoff game, uh, Frank Reich, who has, uh, uh, Mike, Mike McCarthy is an extremely accomplished yeah. guy. Uh, people are questioning his play calling abilities. What are we doing? Mike McCarthy, when he's in charge of a football team yeah. in Green Bay, play calling and offense, in Dallas, not play calling, but still in charge of the offense, he has top five offenses all the time. Right. Um, he. He tutored Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers didn't do that by himself. Mm -hmm. And if Dak Prescott has great success, it'll be the result in part of coaching. Yeah. I just think it's insulting. Again, put him wherever you want to put him on the ranking. But to say that, that he's a red flag, yeah. uh, that he's a reason they might not win, mm -hmm. uh, that he's too conservative, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Bree, the last time we saw the Cowboys win a playoff game, yep. in the last, uh, uh, first of all, the, the most recent time, but then dating back decades, they went to Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. They played on grass where they can't win. <laughs> they played on the road where they can't win. Yeah. They played against a good Bucks defense, which they can't beat. Right. And they played Tom Brady, right. which they never beat. And they destroyed the Buccaneers. Mm -hmm. uh, they sent Tom Brady into retirement. And I only think we're half kidding there. Yeah. If Tom Brady would have won that game. Oh gosh, who knows? Who knows? He still could come back, who knows? Maybe, <laughs> well, that's true too. The, the Cowboys were ahead in that game 24 to nothing yeah right after the first half. Mm -hmm. Dak Prescott, by the end of the game, had a rushing touchdown and four passing touchdowns. The Cowboys had, I think, 430 passing yards and 31 points, and that's because in the fourth quarter, they were just grinding it out. <laughs> they could have scored 50. Yeah. They could have had 600 passing yards. They could have done anything they wanted. That is not, and that was Mike McCarthy. Yeah. That is not a conservative play caller, a conservative offense, and it's also not, in my opinion, a guy who's not barely in the top 20 of NFL coaches. So Mike McCarthy gets that big win in Tampa Bay in the postseason last year, but when we look at 2023, what constitutes a successful season for him? How far does he have to go into the postseason? Yeah. Is it is it judged on that? Usually it is. We're going to play the hot seat game, of course. Uh, we, we already play it with Mike McCarthy. We've been playing it since about... Since the, he got here. Really? Seriously? <laughs> he sat down in the chair for the first time. And, and it like, was hot. hot. <laughs> he did. He came into this building... Somebody told him, your office is over there. He went over there, <laughs> he sat down, and his butt was on fire. Yep. 